This video covers basic operation of the test scan MIRA-3 FEG SCM and is created in collaboration with the Michigan Center for Materials Characterization, MC squared. Basic operation of this instrument will be covered in eight steps. Loading the sample, turning on the beam, locating the sample, centering the beam, correcting astigmatism, acquiring images, saving the configuration, and unloading the sample. Before you start, make sure your sample is clean, conductive, or coated with a conductive material, and non-magnetic. You may damage the instrument if you use a sample that doesn't meet these criteria. The first step is loading the sample. On the computer, click Vent, then click Yes. Wait as the column pressure and chamber pressure increase. The bars will change from green to red and finally disappear. This process should take a few minutes. Wear clean gloves when loading and unloading your sample. Do not wear gloves while using the computer. After the chamber has vented, slowly open the door. Using sample sub tweezers or gloved fingers, insert the sample stub into one of the seven numbered slots. Click on the number in the stage control carousel, then click OK. The carousel will rotate toward you. Tighten the set screw with a supplied hex key by turning it clockwise. Slowly close the door and watch the camera to check that nothing will collide with the lens or detectors. Hold the door closed with light, distributed pressure and click pump. Continue to hold the door closed for a few seconds. Then check that the chamber is sealed by gently tugging on the door. Wait for the column pressure and chamber pressure bars to increase and turn green. This should take several minutes. Next, we'll turn on the beam. Click the number next to HV and type in a suitable accelerating voltage in kilovolts and hit enter. Click on the number next to beam intensity, type in a suitable intensity and hit enter. These parameters are sample dependent, but you can use an accelerating voltage of 15 kilovolts and a beam intensity of 10 as a starting point. Alternatively, if you have a saved configuration, you can load it by going to Options, Configurations, Load. Finally, click Beam On. Now that the beam is on, we have to locate the sample. Click on Mode and set the mode to Wide Field. Zoom all the way out by turning the magnification wheel counterclockwise. Click on the number of the slot that corresponds to the sample. The stage will move to center the sample in the field of view. Zoom in by turning the wheel clockwise. When turning the wheel stops zooming in, click Mode, then click Resolution. Zoom out until the whole sample is visible. Adjust the working distance to bring the sample into focus. If the step size is too small, you won't notice a significant change when you turn the wheel. In this case, click WD and turn the middle knob to increase the step size. Now turning the wheel adjusts the focus quickly. To adjust brightness and contrast, you can right click on the image and select Auto Brightness Contrast. Click Auto Brightness Contrast on the controller. Or click the button on the panel next to the scanning window. As a general rule, if you can't see anything in the scanning window, use Auto Brightness Contrast and go to a lower magnification. To move around the sample, you can toggle the stage joystick. Click and hold the mouse scroll wheel on a feature. Drag the mouse to where you want it to move and release. Or click the mouse scroll wheel on a feature to center it. In a general area of interest, zoom in. Focus. Zoom to greater than 2000 times magnification. Refocus on a small, high contrast feature. Adjust the working distance and Z to a number midway between the current number and the actual working distance you would like to use. Because 0Z is at the lens and the positive Z axis points down, making this number smaller moves the sample closer to the lens. 
Watch the camera to check that the sample or others will not collide with the lens or detectors. Hover over the stop button while the stage is moving. If you suspect a collision, click stop immediately. Adjust the focus again and set working distance and Z to the working distance you would like to use. We'll use 15 millimeters, which is a general use working distance. However, working distance can be adjusted to optimize resolution or depth of field. Next, we'll center the beam. Zoom in on a feature. When the focus is adjusted, the feature moves side to side or wobbles in the field of view. This indicates that the beam is not centered. If the feature doesn't wobble, you can skip this step. If there is wobbling, click on the wobbling button, then click next. A reduced area box with a yellow border pops up. You can double click to make the box disappear. Right click inside the box and drag to make it larger. Or click and drag to move the box. Using a large step size, adjust either the X or Y knob. Turn one knob until the feature wobbles more severely, then turn the knob in the opposite direction. The feature will begin to wobble less and then more as you overshoot. Keep turning the knob back and forth until the feature wobbles as little as possible. Repeat this with the other knob. Reduce the step size, zoom in, and repeat. If the beam is well-centered, the feature should appear to go in and out of focus without wobbling. When you've minimized wobbling, click Finish and Refocus. The last step before we acquire images is to correcting astigmatism. Zoom in on a very small feature. Here we're using 300,000 times magnification, which would give a scale bar of roughly 200 nanometers. Double-click to activate the reduced area box. If there is astigmatism, changing the focus will cause the feature to streak horizontally and vertically. If you don't see any streaking, you can skip this step. Otherwise, click on the Stigmator button in the vertical panel. Using a large step size, adjust either the X or Y knob. Turn the knob until the image becomes streakier, then turn the knob in the opposite direction. The image should become clearer and then more streaky. Keep turning the knob back and forth until the feature is as clear as possible. Repeat this with the other knob. Adjust the focus to check for astigmatism again. If there is still streaking, reduce the step size and repeat. You can increase the scan speed to reduce noise in the image. Double click to remove the reduced area box. You may need to center the beam and or correct astigmatism again if you change the accelerating voltage or beam intensity. Finally, we'll acquire images. Move to an area that you would like to image. Right click and select Auto Brightness Contrast. In the toolbar, click SEM, then Image Parameters. Here we can set the image resolution, enable or disable frame accumulation, set scan speed, and toggle the info bar. Using 1280 by 1280, no frame accumulation, and a scan speed of 4 is a good starting point. Click Apply when you're done. Check that Autosave is disabled in Options Autosave. If necessary, uncheck the tick box and click OK. There are three ways to acquire an image, by clicking the Acquire button on the Info panel, clicking Acquire Image on the Vertical panel, or clicking Acquire Image on the Controller. You can scroll the mouse wheel in the Save window to zoom in or out while the image is acquiring. Refrain from shaking the table, typing, walking, or talking loudly while the SCM is acquiring the image. These vibrations can create artifacts.
After the image is acquired, the save window will pop up. Type in appropriate details and click OK. You will be prompted to choose a file name and save location. If your sample is charging, try using frame accumulation to acquire an image. Frame accumulation averages multiple frames into one image. Choose a fast scan speed and increase the number of frames. Here we're using scan speed 2 and 20 frames. The total acquisition time is shown as 12 seconds. Click Apply, then Acquire Image. Type in appropriate details and save the file. Before you leave, you may want to save the configuration. Go to Options, Configurations, Save As, and choose a file name and save location. This feature saves beam centering, astigmatism correction, and other operational parameters and is useful if you have to return later to finish imaging a sample. The last step is unloading the sample. Click Beam On to turn off the beam. Lower the sample and stage by setting the working distance and Z to a larger number. Click OK. Click Vent, then Yes to vent the chamber. When you hear the sound of air leaking out from the chamber, slowly open the door. Loosen the set screw with the supplied hex key by turning it counterclockwise. Using sample sub tweezers or gloved fingers, transfer the sample sub to your sample holder. Slowly close the door. Hold the door closed with light distributed pressure and click pump. Continue holding the door closed briefly. Then check that the chamber is sealed by gently tugging on the door. If another person is about to use the machine, you can skip pumping the chamber to save time.